I've just come to the end of 12 days on the Norwegian coastal route in the winter. It has been a fantastic trip. I've seen the very best and the worst of what Norway has to offer in the winter, and I'm going to show you everything day by day. Keep watching and enjoy. The Norwegian coastal route is a unique travel experience. Every day of the year, a ferry sets sail from Bergen. It calls 34 ports from big cities to tiny Arctic villages on its way to Kirkenes, where it turns around and calls at almost all of them again on the way back to Bergen over the course of 11 nights. Over the past 130 years, many different companies have served the route. Today, there are just two companies sharing the daily departures, Hutterutten and Havila. Locals use the service as a local ferry to hop between ports and businesses send cargo, but it's also possible to take a cruise on board, something that's never been more popular. Yes, you heard me right, a cruise on board a ferry. I previously took the full round trip back in 2019 on Hutterutten's Vesterålen, which is now the oldest ship in their coastal fleet. This time I chose to travel on the brand new Havila Polaris, and what a beaut she is. Even though I live in Trondheim, I wanted to do the full round trip so I could share the entire experience with you, because I get so many questions about the full route and especially embarkation. As is generally recommended, I travel to Bergen the day before. That's an especially good idea in the winter when bad weather can impact plans. I've arrived in Bergen and checked into the hotel. It's quite late, about 10 o'clock. Unfortunately, there are a lot of delays and cancellations on the coastal route all up and down the Norwegian coast at the moment. The weather is terrible. I can hear the wind and the rain uh, from my hotel room right here. So I'm just hoping that there's no issues tomorrow. I've just had a quick look at marine traffic and the Polaris has missed a couple of stops, but it is on the way down here to Bergen. So hopefully tomorrow will be okay. In the meantime, it's time for me to get some sleep because for the next 11 nights, with the way the weather is at the moment, who knows how I'm going to sleep on the boat. Hopefully, with this bed not moving tonight, I'm going to get a good night's sleep. Well, that was a good night, but it has been an early start for me because I wanted to check out Bergen while I'm here. This is a city I've been to many times before, but I still take every opportunity whenever I visit to come and see the highlights, such as the top of Mount Floyen, where I am right now, and the World Heritage Site down at Bridgen, and many other things in the city. It really is worth spending some good time exploring Bergen before boarding. You can check out my recommendations in my Best of Bergen video down in the notes. But it was soon time to board the ship, so I headed on over to the terminal, which is in a different part of the city from the cruise ship terminal. Here I got my first glimpse of the Havila Polaris. So that took about 45 minutes, a bit longer than I would have liked standing around with luggage. But on the plus side, it does mean that uh, the ship is now open and I can board straight away. So let's go on board. I spoke a little too soon for there was another short queue to sort out dining arrangements and of course the obligatory safety video which was given in Norwegian, English and German. But after that it really was time to board. Having taken the Havila Capella as a local ferry before I knew exactly what to expect on board but the spacious lounges and Nordic design still made a striking first impression. After a short wait of about an hour cabins were ready. So I've just found my cabin, 4110, here on the Havila Polaris. First impressions, pretty good. It's uh, spacious, it's a, it's a strange location on the ship. It's at the very front, um, just as the bow kind of bends around. So uh, the room is actually a different shape to most of the rooms on the ship. But that actually means there's a little bit more space in here. So really, uh, really impressed with what I've seen so far. But first impressions, really, really good. Lots of storage, nice bed, lots of space. I think I'm gonna like it here. Although Norway's coastal ferries don't have auditoriums, there is this small conference room which was used to host a first night welcome, before we all enjoyed dinner and of course, the sail away. I boarded the Havila Polaris on the 29th of January, so night had long since fallen by the time we departed Bergen a little after half past eight. 
There were about 150 people on board when we left Bergen, most of them on for a longer voyage and more than half, like me, doing the full round trip. So many of us took the opportunity to bid farewell to Norway's second biggest city. And so day one is almost up. Uh, it's been a fantastic few hours on board. Uh, I was gonna save dinner for another day, but it was so good that I have to show you at least what I ate tonight. Um, better than any cruise ship I've been on in the past, I think, and it's just the ordinary restaurant. Uh, I think I found my nice little spot for the rest of the cruise by this crackling fire. That's obviously not a real fire, but this, uh, this little area here, I think I'm gonna make my own for the rest of the trip. It's very nice indeed. I started day two, of course, with breakfast. There is a ton of food to choose from, but unlike Norway's other coastal ships, there is no buffet restaurant. Instead, you choose from a large a la carte menu, but you can order as much as you like. While at breakfast, I discovered online that our trip may be disrupted by the upcoming storms that were dominating the Norwegian news. So I decided to make the most of our all day stop in Ålesund, which is a unique feature of the winter timetable. But before getting to Ålesund, we stopped briefly at Torvik, which has to be one of the tiniest ports on our entire itinerary. But on such a beautiful morning, it was a stunning sight. I wasn't the only one to think so either, as many guests came out on deck to take it all in. Just over an hour later, we arrived in Ålesund. I was out on deck, again, as it's a spectacular sail in and I'd arranged to meet a friend, so I wanted to give her a welcome wave. Orlesund is the first opportunity for guests unfamiliar with the coastal route to see how it works. There's cargo coming and going, and local passengers too. Locals can even come on board to use the cafe, which is exactly what my friend did. After a good catch up, it was time for me to take advantage of the great weather and spend some time in what is absolutely one of my favorite cities in Norway. On a day like this, there's nowhere better to be than Olesen. But all good days must come to an end. So as expected, the change in itinerary has been confirmed just now by the hotel manager in a uh, expedition meeting. Uh, she explained the rationale, which is to actually get ahead of the bad weather that is hitting northern Norway right now. Some of the strongest winds in 40 years, apparently, according to NRK today. So, yeah, tomorrow, almost unheard of on the Norwegian coastal route, but it will be a sea day. We're going to sail directly from Kristiansund, where we will be at about 3 o'clock tonight, all the way up to Buda, where we'll arrive at 8 a.m., the following day. So a day at sea, tomorrow now. Let's see how that goes. Our sea day began with a fantastic sunrise that brought many people out on deck. I say sea day, but the coastal route goes so close to land that it really doesn't feel like a sea day. There is still so much to see. I took advantage of being on the ship all day to fully explore the ship. I have a ship tour video coming up soon, but here's a few highlights. I also took some time to get a little work done and check out the food offering from the cafe instead of the regular lunch in the main dining room. Later in the day, the onboard team put on a few additional events, including a destination update and a tasty showcase of blue mussels. There was also a competition held to guess the time that we would cross the Arctic Circle with Njord, Norse god of the wind and god of the sea, putting in an appearance to celebrate the winner. It was also announced that because we missed Kristiansund in the middle of the night before, we would be arriving at Buda at midnight, more than 12 hours ahead of schedule, just in time to dock before the storm hit. So day four. And yes, we've been in Buda all day, but Storm Ingun has finally caught up with us. Thankfully, we were able to dock in the early hours, uh, but unfortunately, we've not really been able to leave the ship. I was able to leave for a few minutes early in the morning to film uh, a couple of minutes worth of footage of the storm. But then things got much worse very quickly. 
and the uh, the police essentially closed down the city center of Buda. This is a once in a generation storm, really. Um, the worst storm Northern Norway seen in 30 years, in parts of Northern Norway at least. So yeah, better safe than sorry. We've been on the ship all day, but uh, everyone has been in very high spirits. There's been uh, an excursion meeting where we've been talking about uh, plans for the rest of the trip. Uh, the excursion team even put on a fashion show of sorts where they showed off the kind of clothing that people wear in Northern Norway. And overall, people have just been, yeah, relaxing and, and taking the opportunity to read, chat, meet new people, enjoy the cafe, whatever it is uh, they've been doing. We've now left Buda and we're crossing the Vestfjord. I'm expecting some bumpy seas for the next few hours. Um, even though the weather has improved, the Vestfjord is, is an open section of sea. Um, we're missing Stamsund, going straight to Svalbard. So hopefully we'll get there in time for us to leave the ship and actually have some time to explore a port for one of the first time since uh, Olesund. Let's see. We did indeed make it to Svalbard in time to be off the ship for an hour and many people took advantage despite the snow. There was time for a quick look around and some fun before the weather improved just in time for a sail away party featuring Rømmegrøt, Norwegian sour cream porridge and a hot toddy, all accompanied by the fantastic scenery of Lofoten. I and many others now had the feeling that the voyage had really begun. After a short morning stop at Finsnes, we made the highly anticipated stop at Tromsø. With four hours in port, it's one of the most popular stops on the entire voyage. Before arriving, I enjoyed a very tasty lunch in the main dining room. It works the same as breakfast with a menu of small dishes available for unlimited orders. The sail into Tromsø was spectacular, and as you can see, the scenery and the temperatures made it clear we had truly arrived in Arctic territory. Many people gathered on the outside walkway around the observation lounge to watch our arrival in Tromsø. It was an ideal time to arrive in the city as the blue light gradually deepened over the course of an hour or two. After a quick visit to the cathedral and a stroll around the town, I made the spur of the moment decision to visit Magic Ice, an ice bar and ice sculpture gallery that's a bit of a tourist trap but it's one that I enjoyed regardless. Back on the ship, something I noticed during the day was the increase in the number of local passengers, as we were now very much back on schedule. Many people departed at Chervoy, a small port in which I stayed up to watch our late night arrival. Seeing the ship manoeuvre into these small ports was one of the most truly fascinating parts of the entire trip. It was a very bumpy night. We went through some open sea and uh, do feel sorry for the lady in the cabin next to me. But uh, once we got back into sheltered waters, I actually slept really well. And what a, what a view to wake up to. It's just fantastic. We were very much still heading north. After a quick breakfast, I joined many people out on deck to watch the arrival at Harvosun, surely one of the most picturesque ports on the entire route. But today was all about Honningsvog, the longest port of the day and the gateway to the North Cape. That's exactly where I headed on a Havila excursion. Even though I'd been before, I wanted to experience the plateau and the drive there in the winter. The drive there was certainly a memorable one, with the snow cover getting ever thicker the closer we got. I have a video in the works about my winter visit to the North Cape, but in the meantime, here's a few highlights it was absolutely worth the visit. Back on the ship, warming soup was served in the observation lounge in time for the sail away. Later that evening, I watched a very snowy sail in to Schillefjord, where I saw a small group head off the ship. It turns out they were taking part in a nighttime snow scooter excursion, essentially racing us to the next port, Merholm. Next time, that's one I am definitely doing. Day 7 started badly for me as I was kept awake. Although I didn't feel sick at all, the movement of the ship meant I couldn't fall asleep. So I went for a walk around the ship at 3 o'clock and chatted to the few crew working night shift. That did the trick and eventually I fell asleep and awoke to yet more fantastic arctic scenery on approach to Hekanes, 
the end of the line for those doing the northbound voyage. Many people staying on the ship for the southbound leg, including me, headed to the Sheckness Snow Hotel for one of several excursions packed with winter fun. Hello from the Snow Hotel in Sheckness. It's uh, right there behind me, as you can see. Um, I've just got a snowmobile passing me now. I wasn't sure what to expect today on this trip, but uh, there's far more here than, uh, than I thought. It wasn't just the Snow Hotel. We got to meet huskies, reindeer, have a drink in the ice bar, and a whole lot more. On the way back, we had this photo stop to see Hirkenes and our ship from an elevated vantage point. Back on board, it soon became clear the ship had taken on new supplies, as we had the third new menu of the trip, featuring Arctic cuisine including reindeer and cloudberries. We also had another food event presenting Bidos, the Sami reindeer stew. Soon afterwards, I received a very special invitation. Hello. My name is uh, Sara Andreasen and I'm the navigation officer on board Aguila Polaris. Welcome to the bridge. While on the bridge, I persuaded Sverre to take part in a fun YouTube video about how to pronounce all 34 ports on the coastal route. Check it out, the link is in the notes. So that's the end of day seven. Um, we're heading south and within hours of leaving Kierkenes, we finally saw some fantastic northern lights. So lots of people very happy this evening. I do feel a little bit sorry for everyone who got off in Kierkenes. We lost about 50 people today. We didn't lose them. They they only did the northbound uh, part of the voyage, which is very common. It's more popular than the southbound route or the round trip as a whole. So uh, the boat is quieter now. Um, but we, yeah, we saw some fabulous northern lights. And the forecast looks good for tomorrow as well. Clear skies in Tromsø, so fingers crossed we'll have another great evening tomorrow. All part of the gamble when you take a, a Northern Lights cruise. By day eight, we really were starting to get spoilt with sunrises. Despite strong winds and plummeting temperatures, I stayed out on deck to greet one of the passing Huturutan ships. Something I like about the coastal route is that all ships, regardless of whether they're operated by Huturutan or Havila, salute each other as they pass. If there's one word to sum up the day in Hammerfest, it was cold. The temperature was only minus 6, but the super strong wind made it feel so much colder, minus 16 according to my phone. Having been to Hammerfest before, I stayed out for just 15 or 20 minutes before returning to the ship to warm up with this fantastic fish soup at lunch, and I had the main dining room mostly to myself. I had a late night planned as I was welcoming some friends on board in Tromsø, so I made the most of my time by watching the sail-ins to Uxfjord and Sjervoy and visiting Hildring, the ship's fine dining restaurant. I enjoyed a fixed five-course menu and although the food is sensational, you're not missing out too much if you stick to the main dining room because the food there is so good. On the full 11-night voyage though, it's definitely worth giving Hildring a try at least once. Later that evening, the excursion team hosted a trivia night, something that proved very popular. After passing another coastal ship, this time a Havila sister ship, we got to see some more northern lights, before finally arriving in Tromsø. The outside decks were surprisingly busy as many people prepared for a midnight walk in Tromsø or to leave the ship. We picked up a lot of local passengers here, including my friends, who would stay on for the rest of the trip back to Bergen. Good morning and welcome to Hashtab. What a fantastic view to wake up to this morning. And here we have the town. We're just pulling into Dock Canal. There's a few people heading off for an excursion, but I'm going down for breakfast. A sweet pastry or two later, and I was ready for the day. I'd warned my friends in advance that day nine was the very best scenery. So be prepared to be out on deck most of the day, whatever the weather. The scenery and the weather did not disappoint. Highlights included the Risoy Channel, a very narrow shipping lane which marks the entrance to the Vestralen Archipelago, and one that demands standing out at the front of the ship to watch, and the Rafsund, a sound lined by steep mountains, 
that looked absolutely incredible in its winter coat. Despite the cold, I stood out here for about an hour, unable to take my eyes off the scenery. On my Hütteruten trip four years ago, I took a bus tour of Vestrolen, which ended in Sortland. Our bus crossed the bridge into Sortland as the ship sailed underneath. This time, I was on the ship to welcome the bus as we passed under the bridge, and it was super fun in the bright sunshine, waving our Norwegian flags. <laughs> In between yet more fabulous coastal scenery, we made a few short port calls, giving me time to briefly explore Sortland, known as Norway's Blue Town, and Stockmagnus, the birthplace of the coastal route. Both towns were a joy to explore with all the fresh snowfall underfoot. Back on board, the region's speciality stockfish didn't go down as well with the guests as some of the previous food presentations, but it was soon time to make our return trip to Svolvar, this time for a two-hour visit, and I had a plan. I joined an organised tour of Lufud Pils, a local brewery that has gone from strength to strength. A short brewery tour soon gives way to the best part, the beer tasting. It was a thoroughly enjoyable visit, and thankfully the brewery is just a two-minute walk back to the ship. The only downside to a wonderful day was the worsening weather, meaning there was no chance for my friends to see any northern lights. Although I did stay up to see the atmospheric approach to Stamsund, a port we'd missed on the northbound journey. After yesterday's sensational scenery and evening at the brewery, I think it's time to take it easy today. Taking it easy was helped by the worsening weather, although it was clear when we crossed the Arctic Circle in the morning. However, far more interesting than the Globe Monument was this truly bizarre sight. I had to go fetch someone to double check my mind wasn't playing tricks on me. But yes, this really was a barn, being towed by boat. After a good few hours relaxing on the ship, we arrived into Vrenesund for a two-hour stop. Most people seemed keen to get off for a walk or a play in the snow, but the weather quickly changed again. All of a sudden, we were in a blizzard. You've got to love Norway in the winter. Nevertheless, I persevered and took a walk around the town and along the harbour. It was certainly a refreshing hour or so. After yet another enjoyable dinner, we made our way to the observation lounge for the evening. Although there's not usually entertainment on the coastal ships, a crew member performed for us. It was a mix of covers and her own songs, and it was a nice way to spend the evening. It was an early start in Trondheim, my hometown and an important cargo stop for the route. But the reason I was up early wasn't the cargo, it was to welcome my husband, who joined me and my friends for breakfast, before he headed to work. As I said before, locals being able to use this route as a local cafe is one of the things I love most about the service. As we left Trondheim, we passed the northbound Hutteruten ship Nordkap, so we did the obligatory salute and wave. Moments later, we passed Munkholmen, the Monk's Island, marking our departure from Trondheim. Several hours at sea followed, so it was a chance to relax and hear from the expedition team once again this time about Bergen. We also spent some time on the outside decks, where the final food presentation of the voyage was made, this time Bacalao. Now that we were much farther south, we had more light, so we were able to thoroughly enjoy arguably the best sailing experience of the trip into Kristiansund. This would be the last realistic opportunity to leave the ship, so many people, including us, took full advantage even though the stop was for just one hour. After a late night stop in Molde, it was time to pack and settle down for our last night aboard the Havila Polaris.
Well, it's super early on day 12, uh, the last day of the voyage, and what a week and a half this has been. Um, I've gotten up super early to pack, make sure I've not forgotten anything. Perhaps it's a bit too early though, because the ship is completely empty and breakfast isn't open yet. So I'm just sitting here to chat to you for a minute. What a voyage it's been. We've had some of the worst weather Norway's seen in, in many, many years, at least the, this part of the coastline. We've had storms, we've had sensational sunny days, incredible scenery. The scenery in Lofoten coming south was just phenomenal. It's the best I've ever seen in Norway. Um, and I've gotten to know this wonderful ship and some really wonderful people, both crew and fellow passengers over the last week and a half. Not to mention some fantastic food and fantastic experiences on shore as well. Yeah, it's been a, a breathless week and a half, really. People sometimes think they'll get bored on a trip like this, but um, I just I don't see how that's possible. There's so much to, to see out of the windows and when you do get to go ashore. But I also hope this video has shown you a little bit about the truth of what it's like to sail in the winter. You do take a risk. Um, you might get storms, you might get missed ports, but on the flip side, you can get northern lights and you can get sensational winter landscapes. It's truly a one-of-a-kind trip. Um, if you take a trip in the winter on the Norwegian Coastal Voyage, it's bound to be completely different from what you've just seen, and that's what I love about this time of year. I hope this video has been useful for you, and I hope you'll consider subscribing. And also check out lifeinnorway.net, where you'll find loads more content from me on the Coastal Voyage and Norway in general. Thanks for watching.